Well, hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Review. So today on this chilly autumn morning, uh, the mercury dropping pretty close to freezing this morning, uh, we're out here at the range so that we can uh, function check and zero the Palmetto State Armory Freedom uh, M4 build that I put together last time. So, <clears throat> Before we do that, I kind of want to talk about the rear iron sight that I put on here. This is the Ozark Armament uh, rear iron sight. It's very similar to uh, the A2 carry handle style of iron sight. Um, reviews on it, generally pretty good uh, for a $20 rear iron sight. But the point of this rifle was to basically build the least expensive AR-15 that I could put together. And so this optic, or not optic, this iron sight fit the budget for that. And uh, I'll get some close-up shots in here and put them in on the B-roll. There's a couple of little fit and finish things that are slightly problematic, but all things considered, for a $20 iron, it's perfectly acceptable. The one big complaint and it's one that just, you know, just kind of looking through it that I'm seeing will be a problem is that a lot of the reviewers on Amazon were talking about the glossiness of the finish on the rear aperture. And it's not nearly so bad on the ghost ring. Uh, but again, with the ghost ring, you got that bigger aperture. With the peep sight, what happens is if there's any light uh, it glints off of that and it draws your focus to the near sight instead of to the front sight and the threat beyond. And real quick, while we're on the subject of sights, before we get to sighting this rifle in, I want to talk about, uh, just real quick, a lot of people say that the AR-15 has a better sight radius and thus is inherently more accurate than the AK-47. And I just real quick want to point something out. If you have a carbine length gas system on your AR-15 and a carbine length AK-47, check this out. I'm going to step back here so you can see it. Rear sights together. Look at that. They have the same sight radius. So the next time you hear somebody spouting off that the AK-47 has a worse sight radius than the AR-15, you can reference this video. Now, one adv advantage that the AR-15 has, though, is proximity of that rear sight. Oops, this way. Proximity of that rear sight to the shooter versus the AK. So though they have the same sight radius, your sights are closer to you on the AR, which also means that front sight doesn't swing as far as you're moving from target to target to engage though the barrel has to travel the same distance, so that's probably irrelevant. Never finished going over the rear sight. So again, the rear sight, we'll get in closer here. Might put some B-roll in on this too, uh, just some still shots. Um, it has, it's adjustable for windage. And then after you're zeroed, you do have elevation adjustment and you can probably hear that clicking so that uh, you can extend your range with it. Something I've not been trained on, um, but will absolutely probably learn to use. 
Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that the problem I have is that once you get out to uh, 100 yards or so, the front sight almost, or is, is it obscures a lot of your target. So I don't know. I, I'm, I guess I'm spoiled that uh, I've used red dots and reflex type sights a lot. So um, I don't shoot as well with irons. Maybe I'm just making excuses. I'm good at making excuses. Anyway, so we're going to be zeroing in the, uh, the rifle. I'm going to do a 50 yard zero um, just because my understanding is that that gives a good correspondence, a fairly flat trajectory out to about 300 yards. And that's a range at which I will likely never be shooting in any kind of a defensive situation. Not that this has necessarily been built as a defensive rifle. Uh, we will actually probably at the end of the video go over the why of me building this rifle. So, but at the same time as that, this is going to be the very first shots on this rifle. Uh, I've put it together, I've function checked it, everything, everything seems to be running just the way I would intend it to. Um, but I've got zero rounds out of this. I oiled the snot out of it this morning uh, before coming out to the range. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, I will be zeroing it using the ammunition that I intend to feed it, which is Wolf Steel Case 223. Um, so hopefully this should be, as per the norm on a 16 inch AR-15, it should be over gas, so it should handle those lower power loads just fine. Let's get paper up on the board downrange and find out. I'm starting with 55 grain wolf hollow points just because I've seen slightly better accuracy out of these in my MP15. So we'll see if we get any functionality at all. Uh, I might be foolish to be starting with steel case. I'm sure that there are people who told me that I am. I'm sure there's people who would tell me I'm foolish to shoot steel case at all. Um, to those people I'd say, uh, please feel free to sign up at Patreon and help me to buy brass case stuff. Until then, I'm shooting steel case. So uh, once again, I'm not the best shooter in the world, um, but I've got two straight across up here, one up there, and uh, <laughs> I forgot a writing utensil, so ought to be fun. So the center of that's right there at about the zero mark. So it looks like I need to come down about 10 clicks and uh left to right it looks pretty good so uh good job ozark um in the still shots that i've put in you probably saw that uh with the way the mount's designed the body of that rear sight is slightly offset but it looks like zero left to right zero on that was pretty well spot on so uh i'll adjust my front sight and we'll send three more this is a lot easier than using a bullet. You should definitely get you one of these. And I'll have a link somehow to the rear sight and to the uh, sight tool. It might not be in the description because of the way YouTube is. Gun streamer guys, I feel like I need to go back through and um, probably put a bunch of links in because the um, comments don't transfer between YouTube and gun streamer. All right, three more. Went just a touch too far. That's a much better group. I actually slowed down a little bit. And I may have just miscounted while I was turning that. Because again, uh, it's a lot easier with that sight tool. So I'll take it back up too. I don't know what I was shooting at, I guess. Because i got like one here and one here and one here and... I don't know. 
Remember me talking about eyesight? So maybe I'll switch down to this so this target somebody else left. It's bright red. Maybe I can see it better. Maybe I'm just still a little off zero. That's okay. Function check, zeroing, all the same thing. That looks a lot better. All right, three more over here just to confirm. Uh, again, it's a crappy group. I'm a crappy shooter. It happens. Yeah, I'm really okay with that. All right, so we've got a zeroed. I've got most of a mag through it. No failure to fire, no failure to feed, except when somebody didn't seat the mag right. So, uh, so far so good. Let's put, uh, let's put some more rounds through it and uh, just make sure that everything keeps working right. Well, between zeroing and playing around a little bit, I've put 250 rounds through this rifle today <clears throat> without a single malfunction. Not saying that makes it uh, big igloo ready. Not saying that makes it a reliable house gun, truck gun, anything like that. I'm saying that it functions the way I anticipate. Uh, and again, this is with the cheapest ammunition that there is through Probably the cheapest rifle you can build. So what's the point of that? Let me introduce the series that I'm wanting to start with this. Uh, and I would be lying if I didn't say that this is paying homage to a series that Military Arms Channel uh, was doing, is still doing. I'm not exactly sure where Tim is at in that. Tim has a lot of things on his plate at any given time. Um, but basically what he was doing, because there's this myth that has perpetuated since the 60s, 70s, um, that the AR-15 is an unreliable and maintenance intensive platform. And uh, a lot of that comes from when the AR-15, or well the AR-15 platform, the M16, was first introduced. Uh, the the government used the wrong gunpowder or smokeless powder in the cartridges which caused unreliability in the field. The AR-15 has still, in spite of the decades now that it's been in service in some permutation or another, still somehow has this stigma of unreliability or maintenance intensiveness around it. So Tim set forth to disprove that using a Bravo company manufacturing uh, AR-15 
And of course, Military Arms Channel is very deservedly sponsored by Federal. Now, if you're watching this channel, who knows what financial, well, you know what financial situation you're in. Uh, I personally am not currently in a position to purchase a Bravo company AR-15, let alone something like Daniel Defense or Novinsky or keep going. I also, as I've mentioned many times, I shoot steel cased ammunition due to the fact that I can typically get that for well under 20 cents a round shipped. Uh, and yes, I, I lose the ability to reload my empties, but I currently don't have the time for that anyway. So my goal though, again, is to pay homage to the, uh, to the testing that Tim was doing with the tactical review take on that. So, round figures before taxes, before you know government theft, any of that. As it sits, I have I have maybe three hundred and sixty dollars in this rifle. Uh, the lower receiver ran me about fifty dollars at my local gun shop, and I purchased a blemished upper uh, or a blemished Freedom Build Kit for $290 before shipping and theft. And then I have this $20 rear sight on here to complete the package. So here's the plan with this poor rifle. I will go home and clean this now, and I will re-lube it so that we're kind of resetting on maintenance. And then what the plan is, is that we are going to feed it a thousand rounds at a time of Wolf Steel Case 223. When I close the receiver back after cleaning and oiling it, it will be the last time that we open this receiver until the operating system simply ceases to function due to a lack of maintenance. I will not completely starve the poor weapon of oil. However, the only oiling I will administer will be what I can get through the ejection port. So, stay tuned for that. That will be an ongoing series here. Uh, today was just to confirm full functionality of this rifle. I'm very pleased with it. And Mr. Guns and Gear has even reviewed these. This is probably the best sub $400 rifle AR-15 you're going to get. Anything cheaper than this, uh, you're going to be dealing with a polymer lower, and the jury's still kind of out on those. Uh, Bushmaster, I know, makes one with a polymer upper. There's no way on God's green earth that I'm going to do that. Um, if you want something that's possibly the next step up, you're going to pay $100 to $200 more and uh, get up into an M&P 15 Sport 2. So, uh, now that $360 didn't include any magazines. I had those. Um, you can find aluminum mags on Palmetto State Armory for like $9 a piece almost all the time. Uh, you can get either a Gen 2 or Gen 3P mag, usually for $8 to $11 shipped, depending on the quantity of magazines you buy. So that will be an extra expense. Um, ammunition, obviously, will be an extra expense. But you can, in fall of 2019, assemble yourself an AR-15, fully functional AR-15, for under $400. So, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on YouTube, ring that little notification bell. Otherwise, you're not going to be notified when I upload new content. If you haven't been seeing a new video every week recently, double check that YouTube hasn't changed your notification settings. Uh, there are more friendly platforms for me to upload to, and in fact, I do currently utilize GunStreamer, uh, but YouTube has the biggest reach and some of the best analytics for creators uh, of any platform there is. Guys, if you want to help support the channel, of course you can share the videos that helps grow my viewership but you can support me directly through patreon 
The link is on the screen here. Uh, Patreon supporters, you get early access to the videos as well as some extra access. If you're coming through North Central Indiana and you want to meet up and get together and shoot, maybe even be in a video, uh, reach out to me. Let me know. I'd love to meet my Patreon supporters. You guys definitely help ease the financial burden of running a GunTube channel. And finally, make sure to follow the channel on Facebook or and or Instagram. Uh, you'll see pictures of the stuff that I've got coming in, sometimes just some random musings. Uh, just, it's a great way for us to be able to communicate with each other. You guys can uh, let me know what you feel like uh, about the direction of the channel, input, suggestions. I'm open to it all. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, shoot straight, stay safe.